So let's go immediately into the issue. Um, let me uh, focus first the, the context uh, in which uh, uh, the triple helix model was uh, theorized in uh, those years, that is uh, mid 90s. And uh, it was uh, inside, uh, uh, let's say a, a stream of, of, uh, of different approach to, to economics. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, leaving the standard economics model, GEE model means general economic equilibrium, which is basically the mainstream uh, uh, economic theory. And uh, let's say during the 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, the well developed new, new approach, new, new streams, uh, despite the mainstream still dominant, at least in all basic courses. Uh, of economics. So let's just uh, look at the, uh, at the situation. Uh, this is the core of general economic equilibrium, which basically states as a theory of uh, optimization of utility and production functions. It is uh, substantially a system of simultaneous equations uh, to find equilibrium prices, uh, optimizing uh, uh, the allocation of resources. And uh, in this model, there is no dynamics, actually it's a static model, uh, the simultaneous equations, no recursivity, no radical uncertainty. And the economic agents are supposed to, to have perfect rationality and there are perfect mobility of factors. That is capital and uh, labor, uh, can move uh, whenever there is uh, um, opportunity of, for profits. Mm -hmm. So it's extremely uh, uh, abstract and non-realistic. And uh, further, the, this model uh, assumes that technology and knowledge are exogenous from the model. It's something that is coming from uh, uh, that should not be explained by, by the model itself, something outside the model that is, of course, uh, affecting uh, production functions, but uh, in, in this case, technology, but it is not something that the model has to explain. Uh, as well, agents' preferences are outside the model. Of course, it's affecting utility functions, but it's out of the model. The natural environment as well, uh, in terms of uh, uh, events, uh, is uh, as well uh, exogenous, as well institutional environment is exogenous. So this is the context. Now the triple X, what, what does the triple helix model do? It inherits from evolutionary economics the deletion of many assumptions, uh, unrealistic assumptions of general economic equilibrium, what we have seen. So no more perfect rationality of agents, uh, no more, uh, uh, the, the logic is not that of uh, simultaneous equations. Uh, equilibrium is not more uh, the, the goal and, and, and the requisite of the model and, and so, a lot of other assumptions. This is uh, further the triple helix model inherits from uh, still from evolutionary economics the idea of endogenizing technology and knowledge. So they are considered not more something extraneous uh, uh, outside the model, must be explained, must be part of the model, part of the explanation. And uh, the same inherits from evolutionary economics, the idea of technological trajectories and institutional technological regimes. That is, uh, it is possible to recognize over time uh, some uh, uh, specific developments of uh, what is uh, now more recently is, is called the dominant design. That is uh, to do some uh, some uh, to make some some product 
um, it is used basically the same type of technology, or let's say better, the same family, technological family, huh? which uh, is possible to, to look as a, uh, a sequence of, of developments in, 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 in the same uh, basic design. Hmm? This is the idea. And uh, this technology, this, this technological family is usually also embedded in, into uh, a set of in institutional assets. There is uh, uh, specific uh, uh, instantiation uh, of, of, of institutions. Now, let, let's, let's say that institution in the jargon of economics, uh, it's not only an, the, what we call, uh, I mean, uh, the government, the specifically the, the some uh, organization, some public administration, an institution is also a set of rules, uh, a, a set of uh, a, a norm, a set of norms, not, not, not necessarily specific institution. And the triple X model also inherits from institutional economics the idea of endogenizing just uh, the institutions. And what it proposes, it proposes to explain the dynamics of society and the economy system by distinguishing three subsystems, industry, university, and government, which are supposed to represent uh, economy or wealth, wealth production, uh, knowledge, so knowledge production and institution respectively. Further, uh, it is supposed that uh, each of these, uh, these are the helix and uh, each helix has, uh, uh, helix has, has its own sub dynamic. Um, Let's say some further point um, about the model. Then I will I will uh, I will raise some unclear point for me. Some point that at least I I, I submit to the to our discussion. Uh, before going to this point, let's say each uh, that in the in the triple X model, each sub dynamics operates as a selection mechanism on the other and the reciprocal interaction stabilizes in a triple helix regime that is uh, they select one another respect to what they can uh, respect to the opportunities and the variance that they produce and uh, this reciprocal interaction over time it is supposed to stabilize in uh, in a combination of, of the three helix uh, helixes that makes a, a, a regime. Uh, a regime once established, uh, which is supposed to be an upper order respect to each helix, but this is something that I would like to discuss with you. It's, uh, in, in my view, should not be taken as so, so for granted, so granted uh, that uh, that the regime is, is a, a, a further order, I mean, an upper order. Anyway, a regime influences and constrains the subdynamic of the, uh, of the helices. And uh, in turn, the actors constituting, constituting each subdynamics uh, reacts to the regime and they consider its features and outcomes as new inputs to possibly change their own behaviors. That is, once a regime has been established, then it, it has a function, uh, let's say, plays the role of uh, uh, reverse causality. That is, it is produced by the helixes, but then it influences uh, the, 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 the dynamic of the helices. Uh, then what what what, uh, what the triple helix model uh, specifically in 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 Lutz's book is is doing uh, the idea is that actors redundancy 
which is defined in terms of actors' attributes, attributes like, for example, just being part of the university or industry or government. So actors' redundancy is supposed to expand the space of possibilities. So it is the generation of novelty. And the empirical, uh, empirical uh, studies made by, by Lute and by other uh, authors uh, has this, this type of outcome, just by using the entropy concept and adapting the entropy concept, the entropy measure uh, to measure knowledge, uh, these empirical studies show that the flow of innovation is positively associated with actors' redundancy. So uh, the higher the redundancy, the more innovation uh, is, uh, is produced. So this is the, one of the main findings. Uh, in the case of uh, Italy, for example, uh, the, the main, which is the uh, uh, chapter six of the book, actually, but also in other, uh, uh, in other uh, publications, the, this is one of the main uh, uh, finding, uh, most interesting finding. So this is uh, somehow I, I, I try to uh, summarize, at least in my view, with my language, which is a bit different from that used by by Luth. That uh, sometimes I find. Uh, cryptic, I, I, I must tell it. I mean, so I try to uh, translate, to reformulate in, in, in a language that is more familiar to me, uh, what the triple helix model uh, is. Now let's, let's look at uh, what for me are in clear points, or at least points to be discussed together. And it's maybe more interesting, at least for me. So the first point is uh, that the three helices correspond to three networks which are partially overlapped as if an economy is made of interconnected networks or second, uh, uh, second uh, version, let's say, the three, the three helices are layers that is type of links of a socioeconomic system seen as a multi-layer network. So in other words, in this case, there could be types of macro links, uh, for example, trade connections in, in the case of industry, norms in the case of government, patents in the case of knowledge, uh, so this is what, what one point that is unclear for me. That is, which of the two, which of the two uh, uh, description is 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 actually one proposed by, by the model? Um, let me show you two pictures to uh, to show this difference. That is, uh, in this case, we are imagining the first hypothesis, the first version, that is, uh, this is only with two, but the same, uh, say, university industry, that is, the idea is that uh, there are, uh, there are agents or uh, companies or uh, organizations, uh, universities, no? in, in the university network, and there is as well a, a, a network of companies and some of them are, are both, can, can do both. This is the case in which the description of the model is made in terms of interconnected and so interacting because they share some of the nodes, uh, some of the actors, two or three in the case of triple uh, interacting networks. Otherwise, the the description uh, would be this one would be different. In the case that we uh, that we uh, describe the triple helix as a multi-layer network, where uh, a layer could be the production, another layer could be knowledge, another layer could be institutions, 
uh, and so on. So there is, in this case, the network is, is just one comprehending all actors. And the difference is that these actors could be linked by production connections or and or by knowledge connections. For example, they can have a producing patent together or writing a paper or uh, rules or institutions and maybe other, uh, other layers because basically these are three macro leaks. Uh, each one of these can be, can be uh, let's say zoomed, can be disaggregated uh, into micro links, into sp more specific types of links uh, uh, belonging to production, to knowledge or to institutions. Now, the side in which of the two perspective, which of the two view is, is not just uh, a, a methodological uh, question. It can have consequences that I, I hope I can, I can explain in, in, in a while. Uh, for instance, uh, um, in the former case, that of interconnected networks, it would be unclear how to treat the knowledge produced within, let's say the improper helix, that is, uh, uh, the knowledge produced by, by companies, for instance, in their research and development uh, department, uh, for, uh, and vice versa. Uh, a university can produce also um, something different than, uh, than knowledge. Uh, the other point that I would like to discuss with you is that uh, provided that the logic of the triple helix model and, and the whole book by Lutz is a focus on network dynamics. To me, it is not clear why the concept and the calculation of redundancy and then of the corresponding empirical studies are made in reference to actors attributes instead of actors relations. And that for me, it's a really truly uh, crucial point, uh, which was uh, actually even the something that made me uh, difficult to understand even chapter four. And when I was reading uh, Lutz's work in, in the past, that is, uh, okay, he's uh, underlying the network uh, that is the relational dimension of reality. And so I expect that consequently, when he's going to measure redundancy, he will measure redundancy uh, respect to the relational dimension, not to respect to the Shannon-like, which is uh, uh, redundancy, which is uh, referred to attributes, not to relations. Um, let me let me show you this fact with, uh, uh, yeah, in this way. Uh, in my view, reality has two ontological dimensions, two relatively independent ontological dimension. One is that of attributes, uh, the attributive dimension, and it means that objects or uh, people, elements, whatever has attributes, there is properties. Huh? There is can be uh, color, uh, weight, height, uh, whatever, or it can be just a university or, uh, uh, or production or whatever. These are all attributes. Uh, different is the uh, relational dimension. It's, 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 it's a different uh, ontology because this is dealing with the relations between elements. So how they are connected. And this, uh, this is uh, relatively independent from the attributes of the, of the elements. Of course, they are relatively independent because they can influence, I mean, the attributes of, 
of an element can influence uh, he, its connection and, and so have a, a movement like this. But basically, if we are looking uh, at, the, at the relations, we, we should stay on the re uh, relational dimension. Uh, so, so my point is, uh, why don't you use uh, link redundancy or network redundancy, which operate uh, actually in the relational ontological domain instead of Shannon entropy measure, which is be created for the attributive dimension. Um, so if Lucio, meaning, Lucio, yeah. I just want to let you know you have had 20 minutes, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. two minutes I finish, two yeah. minutes I finish. So if meaning it comes from network uh, eigenvector, for instance, as, as a loose claim, which is something that I contend, maybe we can talk uh, later or in another occasion, then redundancy measure must be done on the network dimension. The difference is not only a methodological question of uh, just, uh, uh, because it, it addresses to different view of system dynamics. A true network uh, redundancy should be related also to recursivity, which is the number of length could be measured at least in terms of number and length of simple cycles, uh, for instance, uh, uh, of each of the macro links. Um, so if using this way, which was the, the way uh, approached by Lutz, this is in a channel-like redundancy. That is marking, labeling each actor in terms of being belonging to university, industry, government, or both, or, or all the three. But these are attributes. These are not, not, uh, uh, not relations. Hmm? Okay, right. so I can stop here and uh, it is enough, maybe other things oh, later. That would be helpful and not.